In this video, we're going to be solving equations using addition and subtraction and multiplication and division to solve for x. For this example, we're going to have 4x minus 9 is equal to 11. When we have something like this, what we want to do is we want to try to get a variable, in this case it's x, on one side and all of our numbers on the other side. To be able to do this, we have to take the opposite of the signs that we see. We always start with addition and subtraction, and then we'll go into multiplication and division second. Since we have a minus nine, again, we always want to do the opposite of what we have. So we're going to add nine on that side. And if we add nine on the left side, that's going to mean that we have to add nine on the other side. By adding nine to this minus nine, we'll change this to zero, effectively canceling this out. On the other side, we'll have 11 plus nine, which will give us 20. What we'll do is we'll drop down this 4x, and now what we have is 4x on the left side is equal to 20 on the right side. What we'll do next is we need to get x by itself. We can think of this 4 times x, which is multiplication. We do the opposite by dividing 4 on that side. We have to divide 4 on the other side. 4 divided by 4 is 1, which technically cancels that out. And so we're left with x on the left side, and on the right side we have 20 divided by 4, which will simplify to 5, and that would be our answer. Moving on to the next problem. For this one, we're going to have 5x minus 7 is equal to 3x plus 9. We want to follow the same step. We want to get all of our variables on one side, and in this case, we have x, and all of our numbers on the other side. What we'll do for this one is because we have 5x on the left side, and that's bigger than the 3x, we're going to move all of our variables of x to the left side which means we'll move all of our numbers to the other side. We'll start by adding seven, because we're gonna do the opposite of the minus seven. So if we do it on one side, that means we have to do it on the other side. Negative seven plus seven will be zero, which effectively cancels this out. And on the other side, we're gonna be left with 16. We'll drop down our remaining items to finish this out. So we'll have five X plus zero is equal to three X plus 16. What we'll do next is we need to move this 3x to the other side. To do that, we have a positive 3x. So we're going to subtract 3x on this side and 3x on that side. If we do that, we're going to be left with 2x is equal to 0, meaning that this cancels out from negative 3 and positive 3 plus 16. Now, again, we have multiplication. We have 2x, and if we have multiplication, it means we're going to do the opposite, which is divide. We'll divide by 2 on this side, which means that we also have to divide by 2 on the other side. 2 divided by 2 is 1, which cancels out, or we're left with 1x, but we usually don't add a 1 to our x, we usually just leave it alone. So our answer then is going to be 16 over 2, which simplifies to 8, and that would be our answer. For the next problem, we're going to have 2 over 3x minus 6 is equal to 10. Now again, we always follow the same step. We're going to do addition and subtraction as our first set, and then we'll move on to multiplication and division as our second. If we notice, we only have one variable of x on the left side. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the 6 over to the other. So since we have minus 6, we're going to add 6. We always do the opposite. And if we add 6 on one side, it means we have to do it to the other. So we're going to be left with 16 on the right side and 2 over 3x on the left. Now, since we have a fraction here, we can multiply it by the reciprocal, meaning if we flipped the 3 and put it on top, and 2 on the bottom, what would end up happening is that 3 and 3 would cancel out, and the 2 and the 2 would cancel out. So we would just be left with 1 here. But if we do that on one side, it means we have to do it to the other side. Now, with 16, this is a two-step process. We have a 3 on top, and we have a 2 on the bottom. Well, we know that 16 over 2 would simplify to 8. But now we're left with 8 times 3. We know that that is going to be equal to 24, and that would be our answer. For the next problem will be something similar. We have 6 is equal to 2 plus x over 3. But now you'll notice that x is on the right side. So we're going to move all of our other numbers to the other side. So we'll subtract 2 on the right side, which means we have to subtract 2 on the left. If we do this, we're going to be left with 4 on the left is equal to x over 3. 
Since we have division here with our x variable, we're going to do the opposite of division, which would be multiplication. So we'll multiply 3 on this side, and if we do that, we're going to have to multiply 3 on the left side. The 3 over 3 will cancel out, and so we'll be left with x, now on the right side, is equal to 12. Now it should be noted that when you have an equal sign, 12 is equal to x is the same as x is equal to 12. It's just written reverse, but it still gives you the same answer. Now what if you had decimals for each one of these values? Well, we would do the exact same thing. We always start with addition and subtraction and going into multiplication and division. Since our x variable is on the left side, we're going to move all of our numbers over to the right side. We have minus 3.7, so we'll add 3.7 on both sides. When we do this, it's going to cancel out on the left. Adding these two numbers together is going to give us a 5, carry the 1 to the top, and we will have 9.5, and that will be equal to 2.4x. Now, we have 2.4 times x, which is multiplication, so we're going to go ahead and divide this on both sides. We'll divide 2.4 on the right side. It's going to cancel out on the left side, so we'll be left with x on the left side at 3.96, and that will be our final answer. Next, what if we take 3 over x plus 2 is equal to 5? Well, again, we'll always follow the first step. We have addition, so we're going to do subtraction of our numbers. So having the x variable on the left side, we'll keep it there, and we'll subtract 2 on both sides. So we're going to be left with 3 over x is equal to 3. When we have something like this, there's a couple ways we can solve it. We can do multiplication, move it to the other side, and division. But there is a shortcut. We can go 3 over x is equal to 3. And any whole number always has a 1 on the bottom of it. We could do something called cross multiplication, which means that we'll multiply these two numbers together, set it equal to these two numbers multiplied together. Doing that, we're going to have 3 times 1 on one side, and that's equal to x times 3 on the other, so 3x. It doesn't matter what side you put on, we could also go 3x is equal to 3 times 1, it will still give you the same answer. With this, what we're going to do is divide by 3 on both sides. Simplifying, 3 over 3 will cancel out, 3 over 3 will cancel out, so we're going to be left with x is equal to 1. For the next example, we're going to have 4 over 3x minus 2 over 5 is equal to 7 over 10. Now again, being fractions, we still follow the same advice. We'll do addition and subtraction first, followed by multiplication and division second. Since we have our x variable here on the left, we're going to move all of our numbers over to the right, or all of our fractions over to the right. We have the minus 2 over 5, so we're going to add 2 over 5 on this side, which means that we're going to add 2 over 5 on this side. These will effectively cancel out, so we're going to be left with 3 over 4x is equal to 7 over 10 plus 2 over 5. Now we have to remember that for us to add these two fractions together, we're going to have to make sure that the denominators, meaning the numbers on the bottom, are the same. So for us to do that, we're going to multiply top and bottom by 2 for this fraction. Because if we do that, we're going to have that 7 over 10 plus 2 times 2, which will be 4, since we always multiply straight across, over 5 times 2, which is going to be 10. Now that they have the same denominator, we can add this up. So it's going to be equal to 11 over 10, and that's going to be equal to 3 over 4x. Now again, we want to get that x variable all by itself. Well, we have 3 times 4 as multiplied by it. So we could divide by 3 over 4 or take the reciprocal of 4 over 3. Doing that will effectively cancel this out on the left side, so you'll be left with x. And that would mean that we would have to go 4 over 3 on this side. And that's going to be equal to 44 over 30, which would simplify to 22 over 15. And that would be our answer. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the example of 3 in parentheses x minus 2 plus 4 is equal to 2x plus 1 in parentheses plus 7. When we have parentheses like this, we actually do have to remove these parentheses. Well, there's always a multiplication sign in front of it. 
So we do have to do multiplication first because we have to remove the parentheses to be able to simplify this to solve for x. So doing that, we'll multiply 3 by x, which is going to give us 3x, minus 3 times 2 plus 4 is equal to 2x plus 1 times 2 plus 7. We'll simplify this out, so we'll get 3x minus 6 plus 4 is equal to 2x plus 2 plus 7. We can add these together now to simplify this to 3x minus 2 is equal to 2x plus 9. Since we have 3x, which is larger than 2x, we're going to move that to the other side, so all of our variables will be on the left side. And we'll move this minus 2 to the other side to get all of our numbers on the right side. When we do this, we'll add 2 on this side, which means we'll add 2 on the other side. So we'll get 3x is equal to 2x plus 11. We'll minus 2x on that side, which means we'll minus 2x on that side. So we're going to get that x is equal to 11. And that will be our final answer.